Welcome to lecture 7 using the string data type. So as we've seen before, strings are just a data type that can hold text. They can hold many characters together. We To create a string, we use double quotes. So for example, string my string equals hello world. So in order to create a string, you surround them in double quotes. And then inside the double quotes can go any piece of text. Now, unlike a character like we saw in the last lecture, a character can only hold one character. A string can hold many characters. That is the difference between a string and a character. Now, in the last lecture, we saw that we had to use escape characters for certain symbols because they can mess up with the patterns of the, the symbols to creating it. For example, if I wanted to actually put in a double quote like that in my word hello world in between them, I ha I'm getting an error right now. And that's because it's thinking that th it's trying to end this string right here and then we don't have another string right here. So the word, the word world is just basically floating there right now. So the way we have to fix that is we have to escape it by putting that backslash. And now it becomes just a character double quote. And when I run it, now we'll see that... Oops, I forgot to print it. Let's do console.write line, my string. So when we run this, we'll see that that double quote is now in the middle. So that's where we have to escape and use that. And I said that I'm going to mention it in this video so that you can see it uh, if you watched the last lecture. So besides that, strings are pretty basic. It's just some text in between double quotes. However, in this lecture, I want to talk a little bit more about how we can compare strings, comparing a string to another string. There's actually four ways of doing it in C Sharp. So I just want to bring that to your attention. And then we're going to look at some other built-in things that strings have to offer that we can use to manipulate and manage our strings a little bit better. So for this exercise, I'm simply just going to create two strings. I want to say string name one equals Jesse and string name two equals Jesse. For now, we can change them in a little bit. So we have two names and basically I just want to compare them um, and to basically see if they're equal or not. So there are four ways that we can check for equality with strings. So I'm going to create the, a bool to manage this. I'm going to say bool um, names equal equals so the first way that we can compare two strings is that we can say name one equals name two using the double equal remember the double equal represents a true or false value so it's saying is name one equal to name two so that's how we can compare them so if i print out console.write line names equal placeholder and put names equal as you can see in this example, we see names equals true. So the names Jesse and Jesse are equal. So that's one way that we can compare them. If I change this to Bob, though, really quickly, we can see when I run that, the names are not equal anymore. So that's pretty basic. So the next way we can compare it is that string has a built-in function. And we'll talk about functions eventually. But they have a built-in function or action that, that can basically compare for equality also. If I type string dot equals I can pass in two strings that I want to compare so I can pass in name one and name two and basically equal will return a bool so it will say true or false depending if name one and name two are equal so if I run this now you can see it says true because my two strings are equal once again if I make this Bob and run it again we'll see that now equal is false. So they are not equal anymore. So that's the second way that we can check for equality. The third way that we can check is that there's another function in string, string.compare. So let's go ahead and change this to compare. And we can leave these the same, but except one thing is different. String.compare does not return a true or false. Rather, it returns an integer that represents true or false. So if the number that gets returned from string.compare is negative that means that it is less the first name is less than the second name if it is a zero that means that the names are equal and if it's greater than zero that means that it is greater than so with the compare method we can also see if they're greater than and less than so 
if I change this to an integer, names equal, now we'll be able to see what happens. So as you can see, name equals zero. That means that the names are equal to each other. If I change Jesse to Bob and run it, we'll see a negative one saying that Bob is actually less than Jesse in alphabetical order. And if I make the second name Bob, now we'll see that it says a positive one, which means that Bob is, or that means that Jesse is greater than Bob. So with using the compare function, we can basically see for equality and less than and greater than as well by zero, negative one, or positive one. That will give us the answers with that. The last way that we can compare with strings is that there's a built-in into an actual string is a compare to function. With this one, I don't I don't use the basic string data type. Rather, I use a string that's already created. So I say name one, name one dot compare to name two. So in the parentheses, name two is the only variable that goes inside of it. So I'm comparing name one to name two. Now, once again, the results are the same exact thing. Zero means that they are equal, which they are. If I change the first Jesse to Bob and run it, we'll see that it, negative one means that Bob is less than. And if I make Jesse, the second Jesse, Bob, we'll see that positive one now, which means that Jesse is greater than Bob. So with this, it's the same thing as string dot compared to, except that it's based off of the an instance of your variable. So I can say name one dot compared to name two. So these are just four different ways. And the reason why I'm showing you this is that later on, we'll see all different combinations of this. And when you're reading other people's code, you want to be able to see all the different ways that people can compare strings so that you know what exactly is going on when you're reading people's code. The next thing I want to look at is a built in property called length, which is really cool. So let's say I wanted to see how many characters are in my name, name one. So the way I can do this, I'm going to first say console.writeLine. I'm going to say placeholder. I'm going to plug in my name there. Has placeholder characters. So basically, I'm going to plug in my name and say how many characters it has in these, these plug-in spots. So the first one's going to be name one. So name one gets plugged into there. So we'll say Jesse has blank characters. So how do we get the characters? Well, there's a property called length on all strings. So I can go name one dot length, and that will return how many characters it has. So by doing name one dot length, that will return the character count. And then I plug that into there, into that second placeholder. So when I run that, it says, it says Jesse has five characters. So that is pretty cool. The length property returns how many characters the string has. The next thing I want to show you is another built-in functionality of the string. I want to show you that the string has another function called substring. And basically, substring is used to extract portions of a string out of the string, and then you can do whatever you want with it. Now, basically, before I do this, I need to explain that the character sequence of a string always starts at zero. So J is at spot zero. E is at spot 1, and then so on. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0 is always the first character of a string. So let's say I wanted to just get the first character of my string and print just the first character. So I'm going to say string first character of name equals, now we need to use this substring. So we do name 1 dot substring. So the substring takes in a start index. So I'm starting at my first character, which is zero, like I said. And then I told you I only want one character. So I'm going to put in a one there. So zero for the substring is the start character. And then one is how many characters I want. So now my first character in name should be J. So if I print and say console.writeLine, first character of name, I should see that J. So it extracted a portion of my string, pulled it out, and that's it, and I displayed that. I can do another one and say string middle um, middle section of name. So I just want to take the middle. So I want to take the ESS. I want to, I want to take the ESS. So once again, I'm going to do name.substring. So I want to start at the second index. So 
0, 1. So E is a 1. So I'm going to start at 1. And I want two. I want three characters. So I'm going to put in a 3 there. So I'm going to say middle. I'm going to print this out. Middle section. Oops. And I'm going to run that. And as you can see, we see the ESS. So basically, 1 is the starting position of the string or where we want to start reading. So 1 would be the second one. And then 3 characters. So I'm saying 1, 2, 3. So ESS. That's extracted. And then I could get the last character also. So substring is a useful method of extracting portions of a string out for, for certain things you need. So the last cool feature I want to show you of a string or a useful function that you can use is the starts with. Starts with starts with basically takes a string and and compares another string and says, does the other string start with this? So if I pass in J E, I want to say, does name one start with J E? It will return a true or false. So I'm going to say bool starts with equals. I'm going to say name one dot starts with and I'm going to pass in a J E as a string. So starts with will return true or false depending if it starts with that. So I'm going to say comes dot right line starts with. So when I run that, as you can see, start with says true. So it's saying that J E or name one starts with J E. If I change this to me J B, now notice how it says false because Jesse does not start with a J B. Now I could just say a J. I could say does it start with J? Yes. Jesse does start with J. So start with is another useful function that basically returns true or false, and it tells you if that string starts with another string. I could say J-E-S-S. -S. Does it start with J-E-S-S? -S? And yes, it does. So starts with so start with um, substring and compare to and length. All these are useful things that you can use with strings to help compare and do and make cool programs, basically. So that is it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll be looking at numeric conversions and basically converting from one data type to the other. We haven't looked at that yet, so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be using a concept called casting to do those conversions.